Lindsay here, and this is my review for Nope. I know I look a little different today, white tank top headphones, but I just got done recording a episode for the Bad Movie Night podcast, which I'm now a permanent member of, have been for over a year now. So if you guys like bad movies, you should go check that out. It's at the Bad Movie Night channel. We go live every Tuesday, and then the episode posts that Thursday. We watch some pretty shitty stuff, so you should check it out. <laughs> Basic storyline in Nope is a little hard to explain. It's There's no basic storyline in this. I, I mean, I guess the most basic thing you could say is that uh, uh, the this family of horse trainers, they train horses for films. Uh, they have this big ranch out in the desert and flying so UFOs show up. That's about as basic as you can get the storyline of this film because it's pretty complicated. My overall thoughts on this film is I did enjoy it. I wasn't blown away by it, but I did enjoy a lot of different parts of it. I, I love the familiar relationship. I liked the acting. I liked uh, some of the story elements, especially some of the backstory. Uh, to a few of the characters, there's some really interesting things going on. And I like how they handle the entity that shows up. Now I'm gonna get into some spoilers here because it's very hard to talk about this film and not have spoilers. So spoiler alert. Like I said, I did enjoy this film. It's not my favorite Jordan Peele film. If, uh, if I had to do a ranking, I would say Get Out is still at the top. This one's second and Us is third. I did not like Us. I, it was, I thought it was pretty messy. <laughs> Story-wise, I thought it was pretty messy. Anywho, the things I like most about this film was I loved the familiar relationship between uh, Daniel Kalea's- Col I, I can never say his fucking name. I really love the relationship between uh, Daniel Kalea's character and Kiki Palmer's character. They had a nice dichotomy going, and a lot of people are criticizing uh, Daniel Kalea's performance, they're like, it was so reserved and they, they didn't, he's such a good actor, they didn't use him to his full potential, because he's a very quiet character. Living in a rural area, I've known tons of men like this in my life. They do their chores, they do their work, they get shit done, and they don't say shit unless they have to. They're very quiet. <laughs> it was a very realistic portrayal and he did it very well, even down to the physicality, the way he walked. It was very, very good. I, I enjoyed his performance. Of course, his sister is much, much more outgoing. She's the one that does the talk at the beginning. He can barely get words out when he's up there trying to do the safety meeting. I thought that was a good character introduction for both of them. Steven Yen, who plays Jupe, the former child actor, now amusement park owner, <laughs> showman. His character was very interesting. I liked it a lot. I don't know if I liked his character a lot, the adult character. I just loved the backstory. That backstory was probably one of the more interesting parts of the movie. I loved the whole concept of Gordy's home and they did a really good job of making it look and feel like a 90s sitcom, 90s, something you'd see on TGIF between Family Matters and Full House. And they opened the film with that scene with the aftermath, and that was one hell of a way to open a movie. I also liked that the UFO was a creature. I thought that added a new twist to it. And just learning how it operates and, and things like that, that part was very interesting as well. And they have Michael Wincott in this movie. He doesn't do a lot. He gives a great performance. It's very much Michael Wincott, but they just didn't do a lot with him. I was hoping he was in it a lot more. Same with Keith David. I thought, I was hoping he was gonna be in much, much more of the filming instead of just that first scene and the few little flashes of memories that we get with him. I think the downfall of this film, for me anyways, is just there's a lot of loose ends. There's a lot of questions left. And I think, I think Jordan Peele's main message in this film, I mean, he always tries to say a lot of different things in his movies. There's never just one theme, there's always several. But I think his main one in this one was spectacle and how we crave the spectacle and everything nowadays is getting that 
spectacle on your on your iPhone and going viral, posting it on the internet and it going viral. Think you know things along those levels. He's got TMZ thrown in there. There's this whole thing of of uh, Jupe's character trying to train the monster so he can make it into an exhibit. He can make it into his show. He can use it to recoup the fame that he should have had if this Gordy's home incident hadn't happened. Michael Wincott's character is all about the the perfect shot, getting that perfect shot on camera. I mean, he wanted it so bad, he essentially died for it. And he said that, <laughs> that OJ and his sister didn't deserve it. <laughs> what a dick. <laughs> I haven't listened to any reviews on this film at all. From what I see on Twitter, a lot of people don't like it. <laughs> I just thought it was okay, really. In the end, I thought it was okay. It does have some really fun stuff in it. And I like all the horses. <laughs> that cloud, they moved an inch. It's aliens. They're just waiting for the perfect time to shove metal probes up our asses. I'll be rooting for you. Now we, we're, we are gonna take a look at one uh, person's review on here that has caused a bit of a stir <laughs> on Twitter. This review was posted, uh, this review thread was posted by Logan Paul. I think most people know him from when he uh, posted uh, a dead body on YouTube of someone who committed suicide. So that, yeah. But he decided that, um, you know, he should do a movie review on Twitter. The guy that was uh, the star of The Thinning and that stupid plane movie. I didn't watch either of them. But let's see, let's see what he says about Nope. Nope is one of the worst movies I've seen in a long time. I love Jordan Peele and Kiki Palmer, can act her ass off, but this movie is objectively slow and confusing with stretched themes that don't justify the pace. Eh, there, there are definitely some stretched themes in the film. I, I don't think that affects the pace of the movie. I, I thought the pace was pretty decent. I mean, it's over a two-hour movie, and it didn't feel overly long to me. Until the, until the end, I thought they, they stretched it a little bit at the end. Next tweet in the thread. It's not hard to conceptualize something disturbing. A trained chimp goes animalistic and mauls an entire set, or a UFO devours anything in its path. It is hard to sensibly tie it to the plot, which was done remarkably poor here. What? Well, they are the plot. The UFO is the plot. That is the plot, Logan. <laughs> and I, I think the, the chimp going animalistic it speaks more to the character development of Jupe and, and just builds into, into the spectacle, the, the, the theme on us craving the spectacle and the disastrous things that can happen when we do that. like. A little girl getting her face torn off or then later that same girl grown up getting sucked up into a, a flying monster and liquefied and then sprayed over a house man she had it rough <laughs> all right and now he says a series of questions spoiler alert you already s gave some spoilers away in this this first one here but okay number one Logan Paul's first question. No one was curious how a quarter shot through a man's face and killed him, or why a key was lodged in the backside of the horse he was riding. They answer that in the movie, Logan. Um, they think it was a private plane that was passing overhead and, like, flushed some shit out or something like that. They say it in the movie. Um, number two, why, how did the shoes stand upright on the set of Gordy's home? This one I'm sure has a reason, but I haven't found anything that makes sense. Now, I didn't think this made sense either. So, I mean, he's, he's got a good point here. I did read an article where, um, Jordan Peele said something about what we're seeing is Jupe's Jupe's version of what happened, how he remembers it, and he may not remember it completely as it happened, because he was a very young kid, and you know, memories fade. I don't, although I don't know how you could forget something like that, or it was so traumatic that he concocted it differently. 
Because maybe at the end, <laughs> maybe at the end, Gordy didn't give him the fist bump. You know, who, kn who knows what the hell happened in that room? But that is not evident in any way by what they show in the film. So I think he does have a point there with the shoe. Because, I mean, he even kept the shoe and he has it framed on the wall. So obviously that memory w had to have been true because he grabbed the shoe. So unless he was hallucinating in the moment, I don't know, I don't know. You're right, Logan, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> Number three, the deep voice cinematographer was cryptic for no reason other than being, other than to be cryptic. You're telling me this guy was willing to die because he wanted better lighting to capture the ET for real. It wasn't because he wanted better lighting. He wanted the shot the ultimate, ultimate shot. That's why he went up there. Because he knew having a shot of that thing coming down and sucking him up was the greatest shot ever. And it didn't, I guess it really didn't matter to him maybe that no one else saw it. He captured it and that's all he wanted. He just wanted to capture the shot. And the, the name of that deep voice cinematographer is Michael fucking Wincott. <laughs> Number four, same note man on the motorcycle why was his voice deep and robotic spooky vibes i don't know framed to be an antagonist who'd have a grand reveal he's literally in the movie for like five minutes how did they frame him up to be an antagonist who'd have a grand reveal i mean it's just i mean they throw it out as a red herring but i mean they don't they don't put it up that much, I don't think. Mystery solely for the sake of mystery is confusing and leaves too many open ends for a viewer trying to invest themselves in a storyline. I don't know what, I don't know what that means. <laughs> yeah, I mean, mystery solely, solely for the sake of mystery is confusing. I mean, but it's done in film all the time. Sometimes mystery that isn't connected to anything is more for atmosphere or vibe of a film. In this one, I, I didn't think that that character really was that important. And I mean, I didn't really care for the guy on the bike either. I thought TMZ rolling up just kind of broke the rhythm of the scene that was going on. I don't know. It was a little weird, but I don't think they framed it up to be something big like you're saying. And I, I mean, I do agree with you partly from on this point of mystery solely for the sake of mystery is confusing and leaves too many open ends. I would agree somewhat on that because if you're going to show something like a shoe in a frame on a wall and put that much importance on something like that, it should come back around. <laughs> it should serve some kind of purpose or some kind of discovery. But it, but it never does. The guy on the bike, it goes into, it goes into some of the themes that Peel was trying to do. Was it successful? I don't know. Five. My next point: the storyline is all over the place in a crowd of. Four, okay, I mean the main storyline, the main through, the main plot line is the brother and sister and the alien. And that stays pretty steady, I think. But getting back to, to Logan's tweet here. Number five, my next point, the storyline is all over the place. In a crowd of 40 people, the actress who was mauled on the set of Gordy's home was there. Why? Because he, he's still friends with her and he's debuting this huge new act and he wanted her to be there. I don't, I don't know why that's confusing and why that needed a point. I don't even know why that's on your list. It was is is it that big of a leap to think, oh, they still know each other and he feels responsible f for her or something. He feels bad for her. I don't know. So he invites her to come out to see the show. Come see my big new thing. And then he gives some possible reason. Shock factor because of her scarring? Does she come to all of them? Did she come before the ET feeding? Why does that why does that matter? She's on screen for maybe 30 seconds. And yeah, it's a weird visual. It definitely piqued my interest when she when they showed her in the trailer. Number six, Jupe has trauma with the phenomena of commercializing predators for profit. What? Jupe has trauma with the phenomena 
of commercializing predators for profit. And for the last six months, he's been feeding horses to an ET in the sky. But what about before that? What is the purpose of that creepy cowboy theme park? It's a tourist trap. That's all it is. These are, these are such nitpicky things. I mean, come on. And the whole thing with Jupe is he doesn't show his trauma. He masks it. You hear the story that he tells and he's like looking up wistfully that it's like this great memory for him or something like that. And he shows people all the memorabilia. So he's profiting off that incident because he's charging these people to go in and see all the memorabilia that he took. And he wants to be a big name again. That's why he's trying to get this UFO creature to come in for a crowd. Seven, why was so much emphasis placed on the name of the horses? They had title cards. Why? A stylistic choice? <laughs> a storytelling device? It's a good way to break up the action to tell the story, to move the story along. And it was showing that those horses are important to the story and important to the the family. Number eight, why was Barbie Ferreira, an incredible acting talent, so underutilized in this movie? Why was she even in the movie? I don't know. I don't know. <sighs> Number nine. God, this keeps going. I think we're almost done here. Number nine, way to strip all the life from a phenomenal actor, Daniel Kalea, by casting him as possibly the most mundane, vanilla character I've ever seen. Not a question, I'm just pissed. I th just because someone doesn't say a lot doesn't mean they're, that they're not giving a good performance. There's, there's subtlety to acting, Logan. <laughs> he did a great job. You know, his, his dad is this world famous, very charismatic actor and horse trainer, legendary in Hollywood. He dies in a freak thing out of nowhere. He's gone. And so now his character has to take over this legacy business and he's failing at it. But he's, he's just trying to do whatever he can to keep the farm. That's what his thing is, to keep the ranch, keep working keep trying and he doesn't feel like he can fit in his father's shoes and it isn't until the end when he trains the ufo monster essentially that he finally finds his confidence i guess <laughs> i really liked his performance and number 10 an extraterrestrial creature that is advanced enough to fully shapeshift activate an anti-electromagnetic field and propel itself in any direction quickly and quietly can't tell the difference between a plastic inflatable and a viable meal. Nope. I don't know. There's a lot we don't know about this thing. You know what I think that this creature was kind of based off of is a jellyfish. And a jellyfish will grab all sorts of shit. I think. <laughs> Then he goes on to say, I love Peel, the VFX, and aesthetic, but my thesis is this. Are you ready for Logan Paul's thesis? I can feel him attempting to recreate the shock from Get Out and Us. Mystery, violent allure, and cinematic choices made for the sake of reaction instead of legitimate contribution to the storyline killed this movie for me. Let me... Ow, fuck. That hurt. Let me read this little part again. Cinematic choices made for the sake of reaction. That's just, that's just making a movie. Cinematic choices made for the sake of reaction. What reaction are you going for? Laughter, shock, fear, boredom, I don't know. But every movie is a group of cinematic choices for the sake of reaction. <laughs> Instead of legitimate contribution to the storyline. Oh man, I don't know. Well, that was a trip, that was interesting. I haven't done that before. <laughs>
getting a call from my supervisor asking how my service was. Five stars, Angel, five stars. Eh, might as well try something new every once in a while. Anyways, if you have seen Nope, tell me what your thoughts were. I would love to hear whether you hated it or loved it or are pretty damn indifferent about it. Let me know. And let me know if, if you've seen all three of Jordan Peele's films, how you would rank them. Like I said before, mine is Get Out's number one, this one would be number two, and Us is way down at the bottom. I didn't like that movie. Well, that's the end of this little video. Hope you enjoyed it. We tried something new. <laughs> Make sure to like and subscribe. I usually don't ask that, but I thought I should this time. Throw it in there every once in a while. And also, Check out all my social media, they are in the description box below. But until next time, this is Lindsay signing off, I'll check you later.